Hey guys, Miss Dable here, ready to read chapter seven of Goonie Bird Green, the last chapter. Here we go. Goonie Bird looked around the classroom. She slid the strap of her cowhide purse from her shoulder and set her purse on the floor below the terrarium table. With her face scrunched up into a quiet, thinking expression, she unbuttoned her orange fur jacket and hung it on the back of her chair by her desk. Then she returned to the front of the room and faced the class. She was wearing a blue plaid skirt, a white blouse, black tights, and brown lace-up shoes. There were bright blue ribbons in her neatly brushed hair. She looked ordinary. You guys know what ordinary means? Ordinary means she looked the same as everybody else. She looked plain. She also looked dignified, and she looked wise. Wise means very smart. Out there, invisible, are lots of stories that are not yet told, Goonie Bird told the class. Absolutely true ones, Beanie asked. Yes, absolutely true ones. What are they? asked Beanie. Do you remember how my first story was called How Goonie Bird Got Her Name? Goonie Bird asked. Yes, Beanie replied. Well, another story is called How Beanie Got Her Name. Well, before I was born, Beanie said, laughing, there was a thing called an ultrasound that showed me curled up inside my mom. And it looked, and I looked just like a bean. My mom said, lion of a bean. And my dad said, no, jelly bean. And so, that's a fine story beginning, Goonie Bird said, an absolutely true one. You should tell that one on Friday, Beanie. What other invisible stories are out there? Miss Pigeon asked. Do you remember how my second story was about how I came from China on a flying carpet? Oh my, yes, Ms. Pigeon said. I had to look up China in the atlas. Remember friends, an atlas is a big book of maps. Out there, invisible and waiting, is a story called, let me think. She closed her eyes. Is that the title, let me think? Malcolm asked. No, Goonie Bird opened her eyes. There's a story called How Kiko's Family Came to Water Tower. Kiko smiled. Well, they started out on a ship, she said. First, my grandmother and my grandfather got onto a big ship in Yokohama and then went to Honolulu. They were a little scared because they had never been to America before. Miss Pigeon, you should get the atlas out. Miss Pigeon smiled. I will. When you tell that story, Kiko, Maybe next Wednesday? Okay, Kiko said. I'll bring some pictures. How about if I wear a kimono? That wouldn't be distracting like whiskers, would it? That would be lovely, Goonie Bird said. And maybe I could carry a fan and a parasol? Goonie Bird said gently. That would be a little like whiskers, Kiko. Overdoing it, Kiko said. Overdoing it, Goonie Bird said. What about me? asked Barry. Do I have a story? Of course you do, Goonie Bird told him. You have a story called How Barry Got His Name or How Barry's Family Came to Water Tower. Barry grinned. Which one should I which one should I tell? he asked. Do you remember my third story was about my diamond earrings? Barry nodded. My suggestion is that when it's your turn, Barry, you should tell an absolutely true story called When Barry Spent Every Penny He Had on Something He Wanted Really Badly. The class waited and watched Barry Tuckerman as he squinched his face up thinking. And then he grinned. Okay, he said, I'll tell it, but it's really, really gross. Oh no, said Kiko, I hate gross. You can cover your ears for Barry's story, Goonie Bird told her. Wear earmuffs that day. Green ones, I think, would go nicely with your red sweater, I think. Who else? What else? The class called. My fourth story was called How Goonie Bird Directed an Orchestra. Mrs. Pigeon suggested, maybe we could skip that one, Goonie Bird. I know that no one in the class has ever led an orchestra. Class, Goonie Bird asked, has anyone ever been late to school because something unusual happened? Almost every hand went up. Malcolm, Goonie Bird said, maybe that could be your assignment. It could be why Malcolm was late to school. It could be about the time I fell asleep under my bed and my mom couldn't find me in the morning. Or one time when I dropped my toothbrush in the toilet and when I tried to get it back, I, oh no, Kiko said, and she covered her ears. 
Don't tell it now. Don't give it away, Malcolm, Goody Bird said. You work on your story and make it very suspenseful by adding the word suddenly in the middle. Goody Bird looked around the classroom. All the second graders had taken out paper and pencils, and they were all writing ideas down for their stories. And remember my last story about Catman, she reminded him? Had anyone ever lost a beloved pet? Almost every hand went up, even Miss Pigeons. Could that be my story, Goonie Bird? Miss Pigeon asked. I had a parakeet named Brucie, and somehow the door to his cage was left open, and next Tuesday, Goonie Bird said, how I lost Brucie. And I found him again, Mrs. Pigeon said with a happy smile. My story has a surprise ending. Mine will be how I lost Gretchen the guinea pig, Trisha said. Mine has a sad ending. You know what, Miss Pigeon said, standing up? It's lunchtime already. Let's skip arithmetic today, class. The students put their arithmetic books back in their desk, and they reached for their lunch boxes instead. Goonie Bird took out a grapefruit, a cucumber, and some dill pickles. I'm having a completely vegetarian day today, she explained. But look at this dessert for the whole class. She held up a bulky paper bag. What is it? The children asked. Goonie Bird grinned. 63 gumballs, she said. And after I give them out, I'm going to teach you all a wonderful twirling dance called the Tantarella. Suddenly, Felicia Ann looked up from the floor. Shouldn't we all hug and kiss first, she said. Thank you for suggesting that, Felicia Ann, Goonie Bird, Goonie Bird replied. Of course we should. And so they did. The end. I hope you guys really enjoyed that book. I loved reading it to you. I'm sure that all you guys have some really spectacular stories that you could write down. Think about some interesting times that you've had or some silly stories that you could write down and share. I'll see you guys again soon.